Join me as I refinish this secretary desk from 1924. I had a client reach out letting me know that he had this beautiful piece of furniture that his great grandmother had bought at Eaton's nearly a hundred years ago and he wanted to be able to feature it in his new home but wanted to give it some love to match his style and bring some new life to it. So let's do it. I started out by taking off all the handles and placing them in a bag to ensure I don't misplace any of them and this desk also had folding support hinges that hold up the front of it but I opted to keep those as is and work around them in the off chance that everything didn't line up properly again once reassembled because that can happen sometimes with these older pieces. Then it was time for repairs and there was a support piece missing on the back so I traced out the shape of the other one onto some scrap cardboard to use as a guide and then grabbed some wood I had left over from an old project and traced the shape onto it with a marker. Then using some clamps I secured that wood to my workbench and if I'm being honest, this was the first time I had actually used my circular saw by myself. I normally ask my husband to do it for me because I'm always nervous I'm going to screw it up, but I figured I had to do it eventually. So I gave it a go and it went totally fine. So if you've been nervous to use your own power tools, let this be your inspiration. You can see I'm also wearing a headlamp so I can see what I'm doing and wearing protective eyewear to make sure none of those wood chips end up in my eyes. And stylish footwear because I live in Crocs now, I don't wanna talk about it. So then I cut it on a diagonal and it was good to go and I was feeling all proud of myself. I lost the footage, but I then cleaned the piece with TSP and sanded off the finish with 120 grit, then 200 grit sandpaper, and then it was time to stain. I first applied this Verathane pre-stain, AKA wood conditioner, which basically acts as a primer for the stain so it applies evenly and you don't end up with any patchy darker spots. It also gives you a good idea of what the wood would look like if you just added a top coat to it as is and it honestly was already nearly the color we wanted but I did end up going in with the Verathane wood stain afterwards in special walnut and it just gave it a little extra oomph and really brought out that beautiful wood grain as you can see. I apply my stain using shop towels because they're disposable and this stain is oil-based and always remember to apply it in the direction of the wood grain to get the best finish. Once the body and drawers were stained and dried, they were looking like this and it was time to top coat. I used the bare fast drying water-based poly in a matte finish, although I do find that this one looks somewhere in between a matte and a satin, which is why I really like it. I put that on the body, but the drawers were looking patchy and weird when I applied the top coat, so I ended up redoing them and just sealing them with this hemp oil. It's from Fusion Mineral Paint, and just look at how beautifully that brings out the gorgeous wood grain and makes it look moisturized and totally refreshed. Then it was time to tackle the handles, which started out looking like this, but my client wanted them to be black. So I had to clean them up to give the paint a good base to adhere to. I grabbed my trusted barkeeper's friend and some really fine steel wool, and then got to work scrubbing those up. I wanted to get rid of any patina and any or dirt or grime that may be on the surface. This is what they were looking like after. Then I gave them two coats of black spray paint and it was time to tackle the inside of the desk. For some contrast, my client wanted the inside paint in black. And this so was I'm pretty fusion mineral trying paint to get into all those cool nooks and crannies with my giant hands, but we figured it out eventually. And this is the finished product we ended up with. This was such a fun flip and I absolutely love how it turned out. We decided to keep the little drawer inside wood to give it a fun pop and I think it was definitely the right choice. I got this message from my client when he saw it so I call that a win. Let me know what you think in the comments and make sure to follow for more furniture makeovers.